Lisa Stansfield, a musical journey of triumph, transition, and tenacity. In the realm of iconic British divas, Lisa Stansfield stands out as a soulful sensation who defies the glitz and glamour often associated with the title. Hailing from Rockdale, Lancashire, in the heart of Northwest England, Lisa exudes a refreshing down-to-earth honesty that sets her apart from the rest. With a staggering global album sales record surpassing 20 million, Lisa's soulful voice has resonated with audiences worldwide. In an industry that often embraces prima donnas, Lisa's authenticity shines through, captivating listeners and earning her a dedicated fan base. Join us as we delve into the extraordinary journey of a true British talent who has left an indelible mark on the world stage. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to learn about famed singers and artists. Early Life Lisa Stansfield was born at Crumpsall Hospital in Manchester, England. Her parents, Marion and Keith Stansfield, gave her two sisters, Karen and Suzanne. The family moved to Haywood in 1976 and settled in Rockdale in 1977. Lisa attended Sadal Moore School, Redbrook Middle School, where she won the annual talent contest, and Older Hill Community School, all located in Rockdale. Growing up, soul music played a significant role, with her mother's collection of Diana Ross and the Supremes records inspiring her. Lisa also found inspiration in the music of Marvin Gaye, she and Barry White, shaping her musical journey. At the young age of 14, Lisa achieved a breakthrough by winning the local talent competition, Search for a Star, sponsored by the Manchester Evening News at Salford's Willows Club. This pivotal moment led to her first recording contract. At 15, in 1981, she released her debut single titled, Your Alibis. Lisa then signed with Polydor and released several singles between 1982 and 1983. Although none achieved chart success, at the same time, she co-hosted the UK TV music show, Razzamataz, which provided a well-paid opportunity. However, Lisa realized that pursuing this path would hinder her credibility as a singer. Consequently, she made the decision to leave the show and focus solely on her singing career. During her journey, Lisa met Augusto Grassi, an Italian costume designer, on a vacation in Tunisia. They got married in 1987 at Sacred Hearts Catholic Church in Rockdale, and Lisa moved to Zagarolo, a hilltop town near Rome, Italy. However, Lisa's fascination was more with the idea of Italy than her husband, and after just 16 weeks, she realized their marriage had reached its end. Blue Zone after returning to Rockdale, Lisa reconnected with her former school friend, Ian Devaney, who would soon become her romantic partner, and his friend, Andy Morris. Years prior, during a chance encounter, Ian and Andy convinced Lisa to explore songwriting. This collaboration led to the formation of a band called Blue Zone. They created a demo and circulated it to various record labels. Their opportunity came when an independent label called Rock and Horse later acquired by Arista, signed them. Blue Zone's initial two singles didn't gain much traction, but their third release started gaining attention. Titled Thinking About His Baby with the B-side Big Thing, the song made waves in the club scene and received significant airplay on a Kiss FM. In just one week, Big Thing sold over 10,000 copies. Although their album, which took a year to complete, generated buzz, it didn't chart. Lisa's breakthrough moment, however, arrived in 1989 when Morris and Devaney, both skilled brass players, were invited to participate in a recording session by Cold Cut. Lisa accompanied them for fun and was unexpectedly asked to provide guest vocals on a group's new single, People Hold On. The song quickly became a dance hit, reaching number 11 on the UK charts. Encouraged by the success, Lisa was convinced to embark on a solo career, and the trio made the decision to drop the band name. Eventually, Blue Zone transformed into Lisa Stansfield. International Success They were now under the wing of Arista Records, and their career gained momentum with the release of their next single, This Is The Right Time, which swiftly climbed the UK charts, securing a spot in the top 20. A few months later, 
Lisa's iconic anthem, All Around the World, hit the airways. This single marked her first UK number one hit and remains her most widely recognized and best-selling track to this day. The international success of All Around the World opened doors for Lisa, giving her a taste of triumph overseas and establishing her presence in the U.S. music scene. The song not only dominated the pop charts, but also reached the pinnacle of the R&B charts, making Lisa only the second white artist to achieve such a distinction. Her debut solo album, Affection, released in November 1989, surpassed 5 million copies sold worldwide, further solidifying her position in the industry. Adding to her remarkable first year as a solo artist, Lisa also joined Band Aid 2 for the charity single, Do They Know It's Christmas? which reached number one. Recognition and accolades poured in as Lisa's career soared. In February 1990, she was honored with a Brit Award for Best Newcomer, while All Around the World received an Ivor Novello Award for Best Contemporary Song. By then, Lisa's debut album, Affection, had conquered charts in both sides of the Atlantic. She also garnered Grammy nominations in the categories of Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and Best New Artist. Amidst global tours to promote affection, Lisa, along with Ian and Andy, continued crafting new music as they embarked on their second album. In January 1991, Lisa was invited to perform at the second Rock and Rio Festival in Brazil, further solidifying her international appeal. Throughout the year, she participated in several charity concerts, including performances for Curtis Refugees, an AIDS benefit show for Red Hot and Dance, and the UK's Amnesty International Big 20 concert. These endeavors showcase Lisa's dedication to her craft and philanthropic efforts. Changing her sound. November 1991 marked a turning point in Lisa's career as she unveiled her second album, Real Love showcasing a more sophisticated and refined persona. The album featured a string of successful singles, including Change, Set Your Love Free, All Woman, Time To Make You Mine, and A Little More Love. The overwhelming response from fans around the world led to Lisa's third Brit Award in 1992, solidifying her status as a beloved global artist. During this time, an exciting opportunity arose for Lisa to contribute to the Bodyguard movie soundtrack, resulting in a release of the hit single, Someday, I'm Coming Back. The song not only charted in a top 10, but also secured a place on the best-selling movie soundtrack of all time, which has sold over 200 million records. Lisa's popularity continued to soar as she embarked on tours across Europe, Asia, and the United States captivating audiences with her dynamic performances. In April 1993, she achieved another remarkable feat by clinching the top spot on the UK pop charts with the charity EP Five Live, a collaboration with George Michael and the legendary British rock group Queen. The EP originated from Lisa's appearance alongside Michael at the Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert at Wembley in April 1992, a cherished milestone in her music career that drew over 100,000 attendees and featured some of the industry's biggest names. The release of Lisa's third studio album, So Natural, in November 1993, showcased her artistic growth. Recorded at the renowned Windmill Lane Studios, also known as the U2 Studio in Dublin, Ireland, the album climbed to number six on the UK charts. However, it did not receive a commercial release in North America. Notably, So Natural marked a final collaboration between Lisa, Ian, and Andy Morris, with the trio co-writing three songs for the album. With each release, Lisa demonstrated her evolution as an artist, captivating audiences worldwide and solidifying her place in the music industry. Her versatility, talent, and unwavering dedication to her craft propelled her to new heights of success and acclaim. Moving Houses and Marriage In a bid for a more serene existence and to escape the constant scrutiny of fame, Lisa and Ian made a significant decision in that same year. They relocated from Rockdale to Ireland, seeking a quieter life amidst the picturesque surroundings. Settling in Dalkey, a charming Dublin suburb on the East Coast, they purchased a splendid Victorian house with six bedrooms and even their own recording studio. During their time in Ireland, 
Lisa and Ian made notable contributions to various film soundtracks and compilations, showcasing their musical versatility and creativity. Their talents resonated beyond the boundaries of traditional album releases, and they lent their artistry to the world of cinema. In the summer of 1998, after years of companionship and shared experiences, Lisa and Ian took the plunge and tied the knot. Opting for an intimate ceremony, they exchanged vows in an enchanting Washington Park Square located in the heart of New York. It was a momentous occasion that marked the beginning of a new chapter in their lives, filled with love, commitment, and shared dreams. Acting Debut Venturing into the realm of acting, Lisa embraced a remarkable opportunity in the same year. Collaborating with director Nick Mead, she made her film debut in the delightful British romantic comedy Swing, which hit theaters in May 1999. In a testament to her artistic versatility, Lisa, alongside Ian, contributed their songwriting, recording, and production skills to create a captivating compilation of 10 tracks for the film's soundtrack. The following year, Lisa embarked on another acting endeavor, marking her West End debut in the acclaimed production of The Vagina Monologues. It was a significant milestone in her acting career, showcasing her versatility and talent in the theater realm. In 2003, Lisa fulfilled her contractual obligations with Arista BMG by releasing Biography, a meticulously remastered collection of her greatest hits. The album achieved favorable sales, prompting BMG to embark on a limited edition project to remaster Lisa's entire discography, offering fans the cherished, complete collection. Eager to break new ground and explore different musical territories, Lisa made a strategic decision in 2004 to venture into pop music. She signed with Trevor Horn's esteemed ZTT record label and collaborated with him on her album titled The Moment. Two singles, Treat Me Like a Woman and If I Hadn't Got You, were released as a testament to Lisa's evolution as an artist. While the album didn't attain the same commercial success as her previous endeavors in the UK, her subsequent European tour in 2005 witnessed an overwhelming demand with sold out performances. In the graceful transition back to acting, Lisa took on several engaging roles. In late 2006, she graced the small screen in a UK TV drama series, Gold Plated. The following year, she captivated audiences again in the television series, Agatha Christie's Marple, portraying the character Mary Durant in the episode titled Ordeal by Innocence. In another versatile move, Lisa also lent her voice to the English version of the Finnish animated film, Quest for a Heart, voicing the character Millie, an elf, and recorded the titular theme song. A noteworthy opportunity presented itself when Lisa's friend and esteemed film director, John Maybury, offered her a role as Ruth Williams in the compelling film, The Edge of Love. Starring alongside acclaimed actors Kira Knightley, Sienna Miller, Cillian Murphy, and Matthew Rice, the film premiered in June 2008 and resonated positively with audiences, making its mark at the box office. Lisa's journey encompassed a seamless fusion of music and acting, allowing her to explore her creative prowess and captivate audiences across various artistic realms. Ending her music hiatus. Lisa's extended break from the music industry left fans eagerly anticipating her return. In early 2012, she hinted at the possibility of recording a new album during a magazine interview. After a hiatus of seven years from touring and nearly eight years without releasing new music, Lisa made a significant announcement in the autumn of 2012. She scheduled three intimate gigs in London and Manchester, where she performed her greatest hits and unveiled several fresh tracks from her upcoming seventh album. These shows reassured both fans and critics that Lisa's remarkable talent and vocal prowess were still intact, generating excitement across social media platforms. Buoyed by the positive response, Lisa went on to announce more tour dates in the UK and Europe for the spring and autumn of 2013. She also embarked on a journey to Indonesia, where she and her newly formed band performed at the Java Jazz Festival. Subsequently, Lisa immersed herself in recording her highly anticipated album, splitting her time between glamorous Los Angeles and her own recording studio, Gracie Land, in her hometown of Rockdale, Lancashire. Fans patiently awaited the release of Seven, 
which finally arrived in February 2014. The album consisted of 10 impeccably crafted songs, with additional exclusive tracks featured in the deluxe edition. Seven received an enthusiastic response from music critics worldwide, propelling it up the album charts. In October 2014, the album received a makeover with an expanded double CD edition, including previously unreleased remixes by esteemed artists such as Cool Million, Snowboy, Opolopo, Andy Lewis, and Moto Blanco. Produced and written by Lisa and Ian, Seven marked a triumphant return to the soul and R&B genres for which she was renowned. Lisa described it as a soulful record with an eclectic touch, yet maintaining a cohesive thread throughout. While Lisa and Ian took charge of most aspects, they were also joined in the studio by a talented team of musicians. The album was released under Ear Music in Germany, the international pop rock division of Adele, and under Lisa's own label, Monkey Natra, in the UK. During the sold-out European tour for Seven in 2014, a special live album and DVD titled Live in Manchester was recorded and filmed at Manchester's Bridgewater Hall on September 7, 2014. It was released on August 28, 2015, allowing fans to relive the memorable concert experience. Since then, Lisa has continued her musical journey, releasing her eighth studio album, Deeper, and embarking on world tours. Notably, she was a special guest for Simply Red on their summer tour on July 6, 2021, further solidifying her enduring presence in the music industry. All in all, Lisa Stanfield's musical journey has been one of triumph, transition, and tenacity. From her humble beginnings in Rockdale, Lancashire, she has emerged as a soulful sensation who defies the glitz and glamour, often associated with the title of diva. With her refreshing down-to-earth honesty and authentic voice, Lisa has captivated audiences worldwide, earning a dedicated fan base and surpassing 20 million album sales. Despite an industry that embraces prima donnas, Lisa's authenticity has remained steadfast, allowing her to leave an indelible mark on the world stage. As we reflect on her remarkable career, it's clear that Lisa Stansfield is a true British talent who continues to inspire with her talent and unwavering dedication. Thank you for joining us on this journey through her extraordinary life and music. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell for celebrity insights.